isn't high enough. Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl, and welcome back to Yarn on the Beach. This is episode 139, and we're here in southwest Florida, watching the sunrise over the buildings and the trees to the east, and this is the Gulf of Mexico behind me. Good morning, everyone. If you're joining me live, please say hello and let me know if you're rafting this morning. Good morning, Grace, uh, Sarah May. Thanks for joining me. I missed a couple of names. Sorry about that. I appreciate you joining me live. So again, if you're joining me live, please say hello and tell me what you're crafting this morning. And if you end up watching the recorded version, please also feel welcome to say hello and tell me what you're crafting. I try to make a point to answer and reply to all of the recorded version um, comments as well. Good morning. Hi, Danielle, Sarah May, Deb, Melissa, Elizabeth. Bay. Thank you all for joining me. Good morning, Diane, Lisa, Gail. Good morning, Jane. Jane's working on one of my beaded kits. Wonderful. And everyone's saying hi to each other. It's so cute. I love that. Good morning, Beatrice. I am working on a secondary modesty cover today. Yes, it is a pretty calm day down here. The waves are, well, the water's calm, but there's still some rollers because you can still hear the crashing, which is kind of nice too. Jenny, I'm well, thank you. Good morning, Elsa. I am starting my second modesty cover for the second or third time because I haven't liked the rate of increase that I've been using in the stitch pattern which is so funny because a pico mesh is one of the simplest stitch patterns there are out there and I'm having a heck of a time getting the increases just right to make it uh, increase wide. I think a mesh stitch is more inclined to increase this way and I want it to increase that way to work better for a wide increasing modesty cover. I can show you the first one I pretty much finished yesterday this one. I want to block it and make sure it's the right size, but I have a feeling it's going to work just fine as a modesty cover. And working on a second one that's going to be a little sexier, I think. It's going to be a little more of an open work. The chain five mesh with the chain three pico between them. I am using Be So Fine yarn for this, Eleni, which is my number one super fine fingering weight 100% bamboo. I think that you could do a modesty cover in sport weight yarn as well, like Be So Sporty or Be So Serene, or even my Be So Lush, which is a blend of organic cotton and bamboo that's also this weight. Um, missing comments, sorry. Lisa can hear but not see. Why don't you try restarting it, Lisa? Hi, Sheila. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Kimberly. Yeah, I would try restarting it and see if that happens or refreshing or something like that. Good morning, Donna. Thanks for joining live. So after a couple rows here, I'm going to see if I like this rate of increase better. Let's see, good day is just starting my motif magic book. Um, well, I've done videos on a couple of them if you feel more comfortable. She wants to know which project to start with. Either read through the patterns and see which one makes the most sense to you as a beginner or which one speak, you know, makes your heart sing and if you're super excited about one, then it'll be easier to learn something new. Or if you want to pick one that I already have video tutorials done on, that would be helpful. Or if there's one that you just need to learn the stitches, I have stitch tutorial videos on all of the stitches in the entire book. So however you decide to do that, there's a way to get supplemental help. A couple other people saying they can't see either, so please feel welcome to reboot, restart the stream or your app and see if that helps, or your browser if you're on a computer. if that helps.
yes, Linda, a drop stitch, that would definitely just make it, um, we just want to make it smaller, but yes, one of my drop stitch knitting patterns would make a great uh, modesty cover. Missed a bunch of, uh, okay, KB had to reset hers as well, and that worked for her. So anybody having issues with sound or video, please reboot and or reset, whether you're on an app or a browser. and see if that helps. Looks like it's helped a few other people. I've found that if I watch, if I sit in the chat room waiting for a live stream to start, I have not found a real streamlined way of knowing when it starts, and I have found that that's something that you do have to work on. You have to reset or reboot or leave and come back. Okay, I think these increases are working better. Uh, it's National Donut Day. Oh, that's funny. Lily didn't have any problems. Good. Wonderful. Good morning, Thea. Thanks for joining. Oh, Lisa's trying my body scrub. Wonderful. Maybe has to do something with a bird feeder today. maybe clean it out. Didn't quite catch that. See, I'm done with that. Okay. Missed a comment about Motif Magic at Amazon. I probably won't be able to help you with Amazon customer service. I could possibly help you if you email me, but not likely be able to help you right now. So, if you have a question like that, please feel welcome to email me. And if I can help you with an Amazon issue, I will try. Okay, I am still not liking this rate of increase, or I just need to wait and see how it's going to stretch out and block. Here we go. Here's one of the tricks with working with a mesh stitch is that while you're doing it, it absolutely does not look like it's going to end up looking because it has, there'll be so much change in the gauge when it's blocked. So right now I was working on it and looking at this going, what in the heck is that? So because a mesh will end up growing so much vertically, look at this, once once I stretch those chain five meshes out, it all of a sudden looks more like the shape I'm looking for. So I wanted it to be skinny at the bottom and grow in a wide increase. So see how it's gonna grow wide, not grow narrow as it increases up. So I think this is going to be helpful. Now is Christine talking about Redbubble? Yeah, Christine emailed me last night wanting to know if I could help her with customer service with Redbubble. And I have to say, if you just give Redbubble a chance, they are going to blow you away with their customer service skills. I, not only have I had to contact Redbubble uh, in the past for an order, but I know other people that have as well. And Redbubble has the best customer service of any company, minus mine of course, uh, that I've ever dealt with. So I do encourage you to contact them directly and uh, you will be blown away by how helpful and supportive they are. Uh, I just emailed them. They are, like I said, the best company I've ever had to email. Christine got no response yet. Well, I guess it depends on the time of day you email. I know sometimes people email me during my off hours and uh, depends on where they're located and what their hours are, but they will, they will definitely get back to you. I don't know what uh, time zone they're in, but if you emailed them during their closed hours, it might take a few hours for them to get back to you. Lisa, yes, I'm waiting on more face lotion jars right now. So as soon as they arrive, there will be more uh, of the Be So Young face cream. It's out of stock right now because I'm waiting on jars. 
Oh, oh, someone mentioned the Redbubble t-shirt that they just ordered. I made a new discovery on Redbubble. The men's t-shirt that they say is long. It's called the long men's t-shirt. I cannot wait to show you guys photos. I'm trying to come up with a silly and outrageous and fun photo shoot for it. It's so long, it's a night shirt. So if you order it oversized, I ended up buying the men's XL long or the men's double X long. I can't remember which one it is, but I will show you when I, I will send a link to, share a link to it when I do the photos. It's amazing. I have a few, I have one already. I have Life is Short by the Yarn. I ended up buying two more and I'm gonna show you how long, I think they're longer than this dress. No, nope, they're about the same. Maybe come to there. I think it might just come just above my knee. But remember, I'm five foot nine and it's a t-shirt that comes to almost my knee. It is so oversized and comfy and long enough that you could obviously wear it as a nightgown. Don't judge me, but I wear them all day long now and I even feel okay answering the door if the mailman's there in it. So I feel like it's one of those shirts that you could totally live in if you're not leaving the house. So pretty excited about that discovery and I'll share more with you when, um, when I take some photos of it. Just haven't decided how to take photos of myself in a shirt with no pants <laughs> and make it look appropriate. But seriously, it looks like a dress. It looks like a dress. It's that long. And I figure if it's long enough on me at my height, it's probably long enough for most people. Um, and even as a shirt, if you're super tall, so be fine. Lisa got the uh, Red Bubble Queen of Yarnia bag. Fun. Yes, KB, you could totally wear shorts under it. You won't see them. It's that long, <laughs> but you could wear shorts. And maybe that's what I'll do to not feel um, inappropriate in the photo shoot. <laughs> Good morning, Sherry. Thanks for joining. Well, if you're shorter than me, then I can guarantee you it'll feel like a nightshirt uh, dress slash nightgown, which is lovely. I remember um, at a knitting show years and years ago, I bought oversized night shirts with funny yarn sayings on them and i bought one that said knitphomaniac and k-n-i-t knitphomaniac and it was bright pink and i wore the heck out of that night shirt i wore it until it literally became threadbare and fell apart i wore it so long and i've never seen anything like it again so now it feels like i have found that awesome night shirt again so pretty excited about that. I like being comfortable when I'm at home. You know, I had surgery on my stomach when I was a kid. Um, back in the 80s, a gallbladder operation was a scar this big across your midsection. So I still have a 10, 12 inch scar above my belly button, right across my natural waistline. And there must be an incredible amount of scar tissue in there because to this day, I don't like wearing waistbands. I I'm okay with jeans because there's so much stretch in them, or at least with stretch jeans, I'm okay with a waistband, but you will rarely see me wear a pair of khakis or a pair of dress pants with a button and a waistband because if there's no stretch in it, it ends up making me just feel so uncomfortable and it could either be scar tissue or it could be mental at this point because that was i had that operation it was 10 so 35 years ago and i still to this day don't like to wear things tight in my midsection melissa has a scar in the same place do you have sensitivity about wearing waistbands too if it has a stretch in it, I'm fine. Otherwise, if it's belted, I either prefer it lower waisted or really high waisted. But if it's a tight, restrictive waistband right there, whew, nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> Deb feels that way with fibromyalgia. Yeah, I figure at this point, my scar is gonna be sensitive for the rest of my life. <laughs> if I was only 10 when it happened and it was 35 years ago, I've had the scar more than I haven't had the scar and it still bothers me, so forget it. 
Beatrice doesn't wear anything tight either. Yeah, I'm fine with it's higher, like the red bubble leggings come higher. I'm fine in jeans because they're either lower if they're the low rise or they're higher if they're the, the sucking and girdling kind. Um, and other than that, I really don't wear, and if it's something, if you put a belt on, like putting a belt on a dress, you can adjust how tight you want your belt. Um, so that's why you'll never see me wear dress pants. <laughs> like the kind without stretching them. Mm -mm. Not unless that waistband is super low or super high. But in an average natural waist waistband, no. Mm -mm. That's why I rarely wear shorts um, or any of that stuff. Ah, I see a lot of people feel the same way about me. Maybe it's not my scar, then <laughs> maybe it's just a preference. Thea feels the same way. Huh. Yeah, maybe there's more to it than that. I just assumed it was my scarf. Ooh, I brought tea this morning. I have forgotten my tea the last few days. I think it's with all the weather craziness. So today I'm drinking peach green tea with a slice of fresh lemon in it. Ooh, it's still hot. So I guess yesterday there was a dolphin behind us. Somebody saw a, a dolphin. It is delicious. I love peach green tea. It's one of peach is a great flavor in tea. I like peach and ginger together, peach and lemon, or if it's just by itself. Beatrice, yeah, the mom jeans uh, waistband is actually really good for us, right? I love the jeans at Chico's. Chico's has a brand called the, um, what's it called? It has something to do with girlfriend jean, but they, so slimming. There's a brand called So Slimming at Chico's, and they have the most powerful girdle action in jeans that I've ever noticed. I love them. And they come up really high and suck you in, so they look really cute on. <laughs> I feel like they make you lose a couple inches in your waist. Mary likes peach tea and orange and chai tea. Yep, I like those too. There are very few teas that I don't like. Oh yeah, Edna's not here today. Hi, Yvette. Thea, you know what's great about, um, it, I'm glad you mentioned that about feeling dumpy wearing a dress. You know what helps a lot is wearing layers. I'm gonna show you because even Sometimes I think it's just better to put a layer on over a dress because then I feel like a dress by itself says, hey, look at my silhouette. I'm not hiding anything. And as soon as you put a layer on, you can't see that whole silhouette anymore. So here's just one example that I found in my bag. Like, okay, so here's the dress and it's like, oh my gosh, I can see, I can see that my upper belly is bumping out bigger than my lower belly today. Or I can see both bumps of my belly. Or I can see my hips bulging outside of my underpants line. I mean, these are things that happen to all of us. I'm okay with pointing them out to you because I know that if I'm having one of those days or any one of those things, I can easily put on a layer like this and nobody has to know that I have those bumps anymore. Then I'm the only one that knows it. So see how easy that is to wear a dress? So now you've got that nice silhouette of the dress underneath, but you've covered up all the things that you were insecure about or made you feel dumpy. Dumpy, lumpy, whatever you want to call it. And you instantly change it. You could also do that with wearing a jean jacket or a jean vest or wearing a cowl. It depends on where you want to hide your insecurities but I have the same issue. And so whatever you need to do, whatever area you want to cover, and you don't have to just cover that one area like this. This covers the areas I didn't want, but it covers them with other areas that I wasn't ashamed, not ashamed of, um, insecure about. And it just ties it all together without saying, oh, I'm just hiding, hiding that one spot. The camera's getting really dark now, so I'm not gonna get to see much else. Thank you, Thea. And you know, you don't even have to go matchy-matchy. I mean, this what this is just happens to be the one that was in my bag. I think I left all my other samples in the car this morning. Um, but 
You could do this with any number of shawls or any number of ways of styling. You know how we talk about the different ways you can style a vest, a shawl. One of my Cardi vests would be perfect for covering the spots that you don't want to see in a dress. And then if you still wanted to go sleeveless, it's a great way to do that as well. Yeah, you know, I picked prints when I picked this Amazon dress that I thought had lots of opportunities to match with yarn. And this particular dress matches so many of the blue-green family. So like, this is Calypso Lime. Look at how cute that matches the dress. This is Caribbean Turquoise. The, the, navy, the navy blue in here would go really well with um, Blue Danube. I think you could even pull off white with this because there's a little bit of white in there. I just, I really think that you could go in so many directions. And then don't forget, you could also go, yes, this is called the Little Hickory Knit Lace Cape. It's a one ball project in Be So Fine yarn. One of my favorites. I think it is so pretty to wear. And with all the shows that I've done and all the demos that I've done at different yarn shops and different events, I've yet to see somebody that doesn't look good in this silhouette. I don't care if you're shorter, medium, taller. I don't care if you're petite, average, or plus size. I've yet to see somebody that didn't look beautiful in this. I think it's just a beautiful silhouette on most people. It's got that beautiful scallop edge of the lower part, beautiful lace stitch pattern, and then it's wide at the shoulder, so depending on whether it comes farther down on you or sits further up on you, it just looks beautiful on everybody. Do I have, a, I think I have an older video on this shawl, so it's one of my older ones. If somebody watches it and thinks and says, oh, that's really awful because it's one of Kristen's first videos, um, feel welcome to um, tell me and we could redo it. <laughs> I know I get better in time just like everybody else. I, I'm always preaching about practice makes perfect and you get better the more you practice. So if it's one of those older videos that you go, oh, let me know and uh, I can redo it. Oh my gosh. I just, that is so weird. I don't know. I just hit my, I just hit my hand here and it immediately cramped and it immediately bruised. Can you see that purple spot right there? And it hurts. I don't know what the heck I did. <laughs> Look at how, I wonder if I got bit by something? It's burning and it's cramping. It's now red and purple. I have no idea what I did. I thought I just leaned down on the towel Weird. Oh, okay, it is a blood vessel or something. Thank you, ladies. I don't have to sit here and panic that some monster um, bit me down there. Yeah, I, I felt a little pop. I've never done that before. Yep, that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like a blood vessel popped. So it's no big deal. I'm gonna live. <laughs> my left hand too so I guess that's better than my right all right it's already stopped cramping but definitely red and purple now <laughs> at least for a little while longer <laughs> I'll live another day to craft all right <laughs> no I think I would have known if an alligator bit me I think I would have known that. Yeah, it does hurt, Mar. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know, Grace. They're my money makers. Got to take care of them. I think it's a little swollen, too. It'll be fine. Did I finish the black cardi? You know what? I, uh, said I was going to go home, but that is true too. <laughs> well, Kimberly's done it by clapping her hands. Wow.
Well, good to know. You know, sometimes it's just good to know what something is. You don't get caught up in the fear of not knowing what it is. Thea, how is YouTube telling you to shut up? I don't understand. Yes, it is a beautiful day. Oh, why didn't I show you the whole... Oh, I almost did it again. Why didn't I show you the beach? So here's the beach to the south of the... Oh, YouTube is telling Thea to slow down because she's typing too much. I lost connection for a second. Yeah, Beatrice, I wish I could just come up with ideas and get paid. That'd be amazing. Looks like I... Neighbor, we're back? Okay, I've set my intentions for the day. I hope you do too. Thank you so much for joining me for...